Hi, my name is Renata Ashapatov. Hi, my name is Jennifer Kong. Um, today we'll be talking about our further oral activity, which is about language and female empowering advertisements. If you look on any social media platform nowadays, you're going to see some sort of advertisement. Recently, a new wave of advertising has evolved following the feministic trends that became so popular in the past decades. Different brands use ideas of female empowerment to popularize their companies and to demonstrate that their company supports the notion of these messages. The prominent language of these advertisements shows that these companies want their viewers to understand the message conveyed and then think of this message when buying one of their products. They're using language to influence consumers and to appreciating the stance the company holds. Many of these advertisements do not even advertise a single product. Rather, they are just campaigns of female empowerment that impact the women who make up most of their consumer market and sway them into buying products of this specific company. This type of advertising has gained the name of Femvertising, where female empowerment is the marketing technique used to drive sales. We will be analyzing the following Femvertisements, Dove's Real Beauty Campaign, Cover Girls, Girls Can Campaign, and Always' Like a Girl Campaign. Our learning outcome is to analyze how audience and purpose affect the structure and content of texts. In this case, we will be analyzing how women and female empowerment affect the advertisements companies choose to create for their brand. We are now going to talk about the history of advertising to demonstrate the different portrayals of women in the past and the present. According to, according to William M. O'Barr in A Brief History of Advertising in America, since the 1600s, advertising has been shown in print media. In the 1700s, advertising began to tell stories about the products, and in the mid-1800s was the age of the newspaper advertisement. By the 1900s, the new platform of advertising consisted of salesmen and branding did not exist until then. When the internet took over in the 1900s, advertising was completely revolutionized with the new usage of the internet and desertion of other marketing platforms. In terms of audience, ads have always been female targeted since women make up 70 to 80 percent of consumers and influence 91 percent of home purchases. 75% of women are primary shoppers for their home. However, it was always a man's voice that was behind the selling, how to make housework easier, how to be proper mothers and wives, and how to be passive and domestic were all messages of 1900s advertising until the 1970s when a new wave of feminism came into play. In the 1960s, Virginia Slim, the godmother of feminist brands, started selling female empowerment in her campaign to sell cigarettes with the You've Come a Long Way Baby slogan. It is now a part of a growing trend of femvertising, such that ads are embracing feminist ideals and female empowerment to sell products. This can be due to the growing influence feminism and women's empowerment have in pop culture. About a year ago, marketing women empowerment was popular because people thought that Hillary Clinton would be the first female president. But now, for women, it is a small act of resistance. Samantha Skay is a, pers is a key person when discussing femvertising. She is the president and chief revenue marketing officer of She Knows Media, a digital media company for women. This company emphasizes the importance of female empowerment and they recently started giving out awards to different companies who created success successful empowering videos. SCA wants companies to effectively use these empowering campaigns as a mean for advertising and to use feelings to personally connect with the women watching these advertisements. Women empowerment and capitalism are everywhere. Since Dove released its Real Beauty campaign in 2014, a multitude of other companies such as Google, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, and Chevrolet have released empowering video, videos of empowering women. According to Fama Francisco, Vice President for the Global Feminine Care at Procter & Gamble, femvertising works because these types of ads champion girls and women. They speak directly to them and the people who love them and celebrate them during various aspects of their lives. And these campaigns work for companies. Dove's sales jumped from $2.5 billion to $4 billion since the launch of its Real Beauty campaign. These campaigns are meant to drive product sale, but this means that they are exploiting women's wants of feeling attractive and beautiful and female empowerment to sell their product. We will now be exploring Dove's use of language in its Real Beauty campaign to promote its brand. I always thought people were so cute and they have the little cheeks and they're like rosy, but mine are pretty plain. If I was going to change one feature about my face, I would say that I would want fuller lips. I'm definitely a person that looks tired when I'm tired and when people say that, I immediately am like, oh man. I'm starting to already get little crow's feet and stuff, which like my mom has, so yeah. Uh, we'll begin. First of all, 
Tell me about your hair. Um, brown, long, I guess a little bit past my shoulders. Your jaw? My mom told me I had a big jaw. Yeah, they're brown eyebrows, dark brown eyebrows. Okay. I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. Tell me about your chin. I guess I haven't really compared it to anyone else's chin, but um, especially when like I smile, I just feel like it kind of protrudes a little bit. Hmm. What would be your most prominent feature? I kind of have a fat, rounder face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. You sort of realize, oh man, now I, I have to talk about myself and, and, and think about my looks. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about a person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin was a nice, thin chin. Mm. The women were really critical about moles or scars or things like that, and yet they were describing just a normal, beautiful person. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke, and were very expressive. The length of the nose, what is that like? A short. Short. Yeah, cute nose. Her face was fairly thin. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. Okay. So this is your self-described image? And then somebody else described you and I did this sketch. Difference, which is very strange. She looks closed off and fatter. She just looks kind of shut down. Looks sadder too. The second one is more beautiful. You think they're catching more of that from you? Here? Yeah. 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 She looks more open and um, friendly and happy. In the Real Beauty campaign, mm -hmm. an, an FBI trained artist asks women to describe themselves and asks other people to describe the same woman. He draws both versions of women and compares the drawings side by side. In this ad, language plays a large role in the description of women. When the women were asked to describe themselves, they used words and phrases such as plain, crow's feet, and I feel like it kind of protrudes a little bit, and fat, rounder face. These words have a negative connotation and demonstrate that when describing themselves, women concentrate on their moles, scars, and other attributes that they do not like. The women also say, my mom told me I have a big jaw and I want fuller lips. These phrases convey how unsatisfied they are with how they look, which points to the st standard society places on them to be beautiful as if being beautiful had a clear-cut definition. Furthermore, one woman said, I have to talk about myself and think about myself in a reluctant tone, highlighting that women are not used to talking about themselves because they are scared to brag or bring attention to themselves. The first part of the ad demonstrates insecurities of women, but the second part empowers women. When asked to describe women that they have met, People use phrases such as nice thin chin, nice eyes, they lit up when she spoke, cute nose, blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. All of these phrases have a positive connotation and compliment the woman. People see the women's beauty and their attractive features rather than flaws. The wor words nice and cute are said frequently and these words are common words when used to acknowledge someone of their beauty and attractiveness. When comparing the drawings the artist did based off of the woman's description and the friend's descriptions, women notice a stark difference between the pictures. According to one woman, one picture makes her look closed off, fatter, shut down, and sadder too. But the other looks more open and friendly and happy. These words demonstrate the clear distinctions between the drawings, and the evident contrast between the two highlight the beauty of the picture drawn from descriptions of other people of that woman. As a result, through the comparison between negative personal descriptions and positive outsider descriptions, women are able to see that they are more beautiful than they think they are. We will now look at CoverGirl's Girls Can campaign. Girls can't. Sometimes you hear it, but more often you feel it. 
Girls can't rock. Girls can't be strong. Girls can't check. Girls can't be funny. Girls can't rap. Las chicas no pueden ser las protagonistas. Girls can't run the show. Girls can't dance crazy. Girls, girls can't, can't play sports. Girls, 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 girls can't. Yeah, girls can. My sport is ice hockey. Everybody told me that I couldn't do it. You have to just be courageous. Be courageous. I was always told singers really should just sing. Okay, well let's challenge that whole notion. I heard that girls couldn't rap, I rap. Girls couldn't own businesses, I own my own business. I like it when people say you can't do something. And I just learned that you have to be yourself. Girls can't? Yes, they can. Come on, cover girls. Rap. Be funny. Be off the wall. Rock. Be strong. Run the show. Make the world a little more easy, breezy, and beautiful. In this campaign, a variety of celebrities with talents in different areas, such as acting, business, sports, singing, and more, repeat the phrase, girls can't, a phrase that girls often hear. Girls can't limits the actions that girls can do as if girls are unable to do something. By mentioning girls can't, the campaign is reminding the audience about the existing gender roles and gender inequalities in society. In this campaign, the cel celebrities use girls can't to convey a negative con connotation, but then contrasts that cynical tone with a more positive one of girls can. Girls can gives off an empowering tone as the word can is very open and offers limitless op possibilities. The repetition of girls can just further emphasizes the great potential female have Females have for greatness. Through Girls Can, the advertisement is breaking down the notion that girls are unable to do some things just because they're a girl. The celebrities then encourage girls with the assertions of be courageous, be you, be funny, be off the wall, and be strong. The words courageous, yes, challenge, and can provide an overall tone of empowerment through their positive connotation. Moreover, the continuous inclusion of the word be conveys to girls that they can be anything they want further breaking down gender inequalities by providing equal opportunities to women and girls. This ad empowers females through their usage of liberating, inspirational words and phrases to highlight the talent and power of women. Now we will analyze an always's Like a Girl campaign. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you some actions to do. I just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Oh God. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. Is like a girl a good thing? I actually don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult. I think it definitely drops their self-confidence. If somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, if you're doing it right, it doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl and I swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl. And that is not something that I should be ashamed of, so I'm gonna do it anyway. That's what they should do. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? In this advertisement, a producer brings forth women and men of different age groups and asks them to do actions like a girl. The grown women, men, and younger boys followed what you would stereotypically think of when someone says to do something like a girl. They were asked to run like a girl, so they showed that they put in minimum effort and did not really attempt to run. They were asked to fight like a girl, so they simply flailed their arms and pretended to fight. 
They were asked to throw like a girl, so they showed the same minimum effort and simply tossed the ball to the ground. The producer then asked young girls the same question, and there's a stark difference between the way young girls reacted and the way older people reacted. The young girls ran as fast as they could, fought as boldly as they could, and threw as hard as they could. The difference between how the older people interpreted this phrase and how the younger girls interpreted this phrase was evident through their actions. The producer's goal with this advertisement was to demonstrate how like a girl may be detrimental because of the way one interprets it. The grown women and men grew up with the idea that doing something like a girl is shameful and is used as an insult. Why can't like a girl mean win the race? The goal of this advertisement is to emphasize the meaning of these three words. Instead of using like a girl in a negative way, it can be used to empower the young girls. It can be used to convince young girls to be strong, to be themselves, and to ignore the negativity, negativity from other people in the world. The phrase, like a girl, has a different connotation depending on the age. For older people, this has a negative connotation, but young girls have started to learn that there's nothing wrong with doing something like a girl. Many people find it important to teach young girls more and more about standing up for themselves and not letting anyone bring them down just because they are girls. Young girls are now constantly surrounded with the messages of empowerment, leading them to grow up stronger and to fully take advantage of all life has to offer. Advertisements like this truly embody the ability of one phrase to impact future generations of girls. One linguistic aspect of these advertisements include the addition of a hashtag to the different campaigns. CoverGirl has the hashtag girls can and always has the hashtag like a girl. The inclusion of these hashtags allow for women to associate a short, catchy phrase to the ad to always remind them of what they can do and how they should be feeling about themselves. A woman who has seen one advertisement and remembers the hashtag is likely to remember the way the campaign made her feel when she watched it. These hashtags are, way are a way for these advertisements to go viral, especially on social media. The hashtag becomes trends, women, women view these trends, more women experience the empowerment conveyed by the ad, and now the company has more people viewing their ad and more people buying their products. Another linguistic aspect of these advertisements includes the connotations the words used in the videos have. Most commonly, the advertisements demonstrate how women use negative words when talking about themselves or how people use negative words when talking about the ability of a woman. In Dove's commercial, women used harsher words to emphasize flaws that they see within themselves, while other people use nice, kind words to describe the beauty within the women. In CoverGirl's commercial, the connotations associated with can't and can are shown with how the successful women like Ellen DeGeneres and Pink discuss what girls should be doing. They should be doing anything that they can and anything that they want, and they should not be letting anyone tell them what they cannot do and who they cannot be. In Always is Commercial, the connotation associated with the like a girl phrase is shown to be different based on age. All these commercials shift from a negative connotation to a positive one, demonstrating how women should feel empowered and should be happy and positive in life, opposed to the initial pessimistic mindset they all demonstrated. Overall, femvertising is using female empowerment to promote a company's product or brand. This has been a growing trend due to the still existing gender inequalities and stereotypes and has effective results. However, activists are scared that com commercial commercialization of empowerment weakens their efforts of improving women's rights. Therefore, empowering rhetoric must be genuine. Most companies do not invest in women empowerment programs, but use these feministic phrases as a marketing technique to get consumers to buy from the brand. We're not saying femvertising is wrong or immoral, but if a company wants to use empowering rhetoric, it must be genuine or else the companies are just exploiting women, which juxtaposes the content of the ad. Femvertising is effective through the usage of connotation and feministic phrases to not only promote a company's brand, but to also increase women's empowerment as can be seen through these examples of femvertisements. Thank you. Thank you.